Hi everybody, sorry about that glitch. Uh, I put it down to being too many rooms in too quick succession. Um, and our internet went very slow and we had to reset the modem. Okay, I'm here now. Um, great to be with everybody this afternoon. And I know Karen's done a bit of an intro. Um, just um, for the recording's sake, um, I'm in Western Australia. I work in the vet sector. And I've done a lot of delivery entirely online um, with disengaged learners and return to learners because I'm a literacy lecturer. Uh, and because of that, I've played with lots of tools and we're going to have a look at some of them today. Okay, and yes, my wonderful moderator started the recording. And I, did you do the thanks to sponsors, Karen, while I was out of the room? because if not, I will say thank you to everybody. Um, okay, but I, I perhaps thought we'd better do it because of recording. So, and Shambles is here with us, so we'd better make sure we say thank you, Shambles, and Carol, both of whom have done huge amounts in the background. And this is happening because of Steve Hargadon's learning resolution, and this is why we get that for Collaborate Rooms, and the Australia series, and we are sponsored by Steve Academy. Quite exciting. Okay, Matt, Matt, spot for everybody who's here. Um, if you haven't put yourself on the map, please do. You can drag one of the little symbols from the bottom left hand corner. And hi Mandy, we're only just getting started because my internet just died. Oops, sorry about that everybody. It means a leap ahead. <laughs> okay, so now in the right ocean by the look of it. Wow, have we really got somebody here from um, Greenland? And somebody from the Northern Territory. I'm surprised about Greenland. I'm not so surprised about the Northern Territory. Um, okay, let's go in. I'm assuming that everybody's managed to put themselves in. Um, and I know that <coughs> while I was away, everybody was looking at a few favourites. So, <coughs> my slides are loaded, I hope. Oh, interesting. <coughs> ah, there you go. Okay. So, as I said, I'm a literacy and English <coughs> lecturer at CY O'Connor Institute in WA. That's regional WA. Um, and you'll see hopefully live links below. Should be live links. Interesting. They're not looking very live. Oh, okay, one of them is, but the other is. Okay. So we're going to look at some of the quick and easy tools that I've used for student engagement, and particularly with students who've been working online, entirely online, because they're too far from campus to come. And the fact that I try to incorporate digital safety Oh, that's interesting. It's, I don't quite know what's happened with my first slide. It's kind of a bit weird. Anyway, let's move on. These are what we're going to these are some some of the options. We've got Wordle, Tuxedo or Tagvido, if we do it, it'll be Wordle because that's easier. Um, blogging, Symbolu, Discovery Quizzes, Discovery Education Quizmaker, Linolet or Padlet, Sticky Notes, Toondo, and Voki, which is Talking Avatar. Okay, so I'm going to say, which of these would you like to find out more about today? And you can tweet to the code. Oh, it's also, can I just do something? Something very strange is happening here. Just ignore those three at the bottom, please, because I, I took them off. I wasn't having time to get them ready. So those are the seven. And you can click the link below and go to the poll. And if we can put the poll link, in tips. 
I'm putting the poll link in the chat box for anybody on an iPad because which is shambles at the moment um, because it's not a very happy bunny trying to do things like that from the iPad I think. Okay. And in a moment, I'm going to share this to see that see um, see the result. Mm -hmm. um, you can't use Facebook. You can either you can and you can use Twitter, or you can use the link on the poll. Um, Okay, so you, you were able to respond through Facebook, were you, Joe? That's interesting. It doesn't say it does. <coughs> Being a bit slow loading, and then I'm going to share it, and we'll see what we've come up with, what people are interested in. Getting looking at. Come on. There we go. Right, I'm going to share this now. <laughs> Hard luck shambles. Sorry about my slow system at the moment. Okay, is, uh, is anybody seeing this? Because I don't think my share is working at the moment. Okay, uh, it's come up on mine now. Can anybody else see this yet? Okay, can anyone... Can anyone let me know if they're seeing? I'm not a moderator. Yet. Okay, well the black screen should actually eventually turn into a screen. Um, I'll take a screenshot. That's still trying to set up my laptop audio in the background. Um, okay, screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Hi, Paul. Um, 
things were supposed to last three quarters of an hour and some people have overrun a little bit for one reason or another. Okay, oh, I'm still struggling with taking a screenshot. Okay, everybody, I'm going to turn my audio off for a moment while I while like this. Okay. Okay, just while she does that, we've had a few people mention in the chat um, about the recordings or the fact that we've got a few sessions running at the same time. Definitely everything's available off the Ning so that you can go and see it at any stage. It's not as good as being there, but it's pretty close. So you can uh, see everything that you like to see. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. That's actually, I'm cheating. That's my engagement shot, and we've been married for 25 years, so um, I'm a little different now. Perhaps slightly more well padded. Um, actually, if you go onto the session I did, um, you can. My talk button turned itself off. Isn't that cute? Yes, Paul, some, for some of them there's a bit of a lag. Um, if you look on your, next to your name in the main room on the left there, sometimes you'll see some dots. In the sun. All right. We might have a Blackboard Collaborate problem um, because my laptop's not working either, and that's on a different connection to um, that's on a different connection to the PC. Oh, good. Right. So I'm just going to I'm just going to dive in. Okay. Well, we've potentially got the chance to do so. Okay. Okay, so we ended up with... Um, okay, I'm moving the slides, whoever's moving them. Okay, Padlet, Tundu and Discovery Quizmaker were the ones that came out as the top. There were three votes for each of those. So maybe if we, um, oops. Okay. 
most of the examples that I'm talking about um, were when I used um, a lot of tools with my online students that were doing adult literacy and numeracy. Multi-age, multi-level, entirely off campus for regional remote learners, disengaged, homeschooled, return to learn adults, and it was a project funded through the National VETI Learning Strategy, and it was in 2012. Okay, so Wordle and Tagvido, we're going to skip because everybody is interested in. Very slow. Okay. Now we should be getting some line of it and Padlet up in a moment. Yes. Actual act sharing and web tour do do um Okay. Not doing very well with the slides either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening quite, Karen. Apparently, there were a few technical issues this morning as well. Um, so, oh, good. So, you've got Lino at vis visible. So, wonderful. Um, excellent. It still hasn't got here for me which is a bit weird. Okay, that's cool. Um, it would help if I could remember exactly what was on the slide, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm just going to open my PowerPoint. That shouldn't make any difference to the speed. So that I can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the, the first... Um, Lino it slide. Seems to have lost most of my images. Um, okay, so you have got the student feedback slide. Excellent. Well, I'm glad that's there. Um, certainly jumping around a lot. Um, okay, so. You've got a slide that's some student feedback, and that's one of the things that I use Lino it for quite a lot. Um, okay, now I've got one up that's a brainstorm about digital text during some PD I did for adult literacy lecturers. Okay, so great. So now we're seeing the same thing at least. Okay, and this one we actually did in a face-to-face -face session but they had, they all had computer access, so we did it, we just projected it on the screen while people were doing it. And that's really what I was hoping we would do now. Yeah, I think I think the beer's definitely calling me shambles. Okay. Um Phil's obviously gone and performed some magic with our internet and has fixed it. Okay, so now it's now let's See if we can get me back on track. Sorry about that, everybody. It's our turn or your turn. If you click on that link, you should take yourself to a line of it. And I would dearly love you to think about some of the ways you might use it with your students and post them. And then I will take a deep breath and plunge in and try sharing it again. I've still obviously gone away and done something magical with our internet connection, thank goodness. It's, isn't it wonderful when you've got your own techie person at home? And I do apologise everybody for the messy start, the very messy start, in fact very messy half of the session. Yeah, my tech's worth more than his weight in gold and he's pretty heavy anyway. Sorry, shambles. Um, there you go. 
I tried looking good. <laughs> it's all right. Shambles, don't stress about it. I'm ignoring most of it. I did put the, the link in there for you because I thought that was what you wanted. Um, okay, we've got five up there so far. Oh, hold that more. Okay, let me keep your fingers crossed, everybody. I'm going to try sharing it again. Okay, can everybody see it? Wonderful. Okay, I'm just going to move the pictures of the images around a bit so that we can hopefully read them all. Okay, I would like to I would like to take that. So I bet it was Shambles that wrote ten ways to use a holy sock. Oh, it was Sue then. Okay, thank you, Sue. Um, I used um, I used it for a haiku um, prompt for the picture as well. Um, there's lots of different different ways you can use them. Um, you lot are far more creative than me. Um, I've mostly used them for things like brain, brainstorms and writing prompts and so on. Um, so, looking good. And global projects, yes indeed, Michael. I love that jigsaw activity. Lots of exciting things that we can do with them. Okay, let's stop the share. Go back to the whiteboard. Um, so that's a very quick one that I use. Toon D is another one that I use a lot. Um, and I use Toon D quite a bit for things like the digital safety stuff. And as you can see, um, trying to find my relevant set of links so that I can um Joe, I don't think we can, much as I'd like us to try to do. Um, so I, I tend to use this with students partly to teach them about digital safety, but also then to get them to create their own texts on di digital safety. Oh, okay, hold on, Shambles. I might share it again if I've got time later. Okay, whoops, I'm backwards, not forward. Students then make their own tunes about digital safety and they choose their own topic. I mean, I use TuneD for stacks of things and as Joe Fry will um, no doubt tell you, I, I post them on my blog sometimes because I use them when we do um, serendipity sessions. This is one that was done by one of my students, obviously about online predators. and. This one came from came to some extent because we watched a video, so they, they watched a video on YouTube, but they also did a um, a review of which they posted on their blogs, and then they looked at some cartoons. Yes, it is on it is an online only one. Um, it, well, what I usually do is is um, collect the image, but Toondo as a, an application is online. So, do you use cartoon makers yourself? Have you used any? If so, which ones? Because I'd, al I'd always love to know who else is doing things with cartoon makers. And do you have any really great ones? Okay, so Comic life, Danielle. I'm going to 
was, okay, great, comment by some iPad. Because I'm sure there are lots of good iPad ones as well, but most of my students wouldn't, wouldn't have an iPad because they're not usually, um, not usually well enough off to afford things like iPads. Okay, so, and you've done, somebody's done movies. So what sort of activities, if I put a line down the middle, you can put the activities on the other side. Activities on the right, apps on the right. Yeah, does anybody know any Android apps? That are good for this sort of thing? I'd love to have had a play with Toon Do, Joe, but it, it, as you know, it takes a little bit of time to do a combined one or go away and make them. And it can be a little bit slow to start with. Yes, yeah, summaries of one of the brilliant things I like to use tunes for. Um, I, um, I've used them for summaries. I use them. I use them to get students to demonstrate understanding and storyboard their stories. Yes. Yeah. Anybody got any more brilliant ideas? Would anyone like to grab the mic for a very quick tell about how they use cartoons or how they might use cartoons with their students? If so, please could you put your hand up? Anybody want to? Okay, and, and I know Sue uses them a lot. Another thing that I've used them for is um, to get students who are struggling with the difference between there and there, for example, to create a cartoon that demonstrates that difference. And that one, that one works quite well as well. Because it, it often you find if you tell them to go away and look at, look at the difference online or look at the difference in a, go for it, so sorry. Oh. Okay, sorry, so I, I probably missed, missed you earlier or something. Um, yeah, prepositions would be a great one because it's always things that they get mixed up. And often I find if, you, if, if I send my students away and say, okay, find out the difference, they'll just come back and give me a definition out of the dictionary or something. And if I ask them to go away and make me a cartoon that shows the difference, then and uses the words. I find that's really, that's really a great way. And they love playing with the cartoons. And it, it doesn't really matter what age they are. I find it works with the younger ones. It works with the old ones. It works in the, with the in-between ones. And it's great for the disengaged ones. OK. Now, what was our third one? That's very key. Discovery Puzzle Maker, wasn't it? Puzzle Maker is something I discovered, oh, probably about five years ago. And I absolutely love it. Um, you might want to, let me just put the link in there so that anybody on an iPad can get at it. Um, yeah, you might want to have a play with us at some point. And um, just for some examples of how I've used it, this is one of my um, word searches. Because I do a lot of teaching through Blackboard Collaborate with regional students, I often need an icebreaker. And something that I can put on the board for when people are coming into the room, a bit like I use the map on the, on the Friday webinars. Um, it's great, and if I can choose something that's also going to give them a, a revision. For example, this is a this is a follow-up. The, the day before, we had done a session on um, using images in their blogs, and so 
I made a word search with a whole load of words. And the nice thing about this is that you can use the highlighter in the tool and you can get them to use different colours and that's quite sort of bright and cheerful as well. And sometimes I get, it doesn't matter if the, if the, if the same number found, the same word stands twice. Um, I'm glad you're all doing this. I was hoping people would. Sorry, shambles. I'll let you guys finish this for a moment. <laughs> and I, as well as things like um, this, some of the other discovery stuff lends itself quite well to those sorts of icebreakery things on the whiteboard. Um, and the next one is the next one I'll show you is, is like that as well. I am conscious that I better hurry up a little bit, or we'll be. Um, yeah, and, and then obviously quite a lot of my students, because I teach adult, teach literacy numeracy. Um, for those of you in Australia who may have heard of it, I, I used to teach CTA. Prison is where you might end up, so if you um, if you do too much copyright theft and stuff, that's meant to be a funny one. It wasn't a sort of quite as serious as others because I always tend to say to my students when I'm telling them about this sort of thing, you know, it's against the law, you could end up in jail. So, But this, these, these are some of my sort of fun sorts of things. Yeah, and I, I think it's important that they know the consequences, especially the younger ones. Um, and I see so many people who should know better just taking images off the internet and using them, and I'm talking teachers here, um, colleagues. So, and, and they're very easy to make with this, the Discovery Puzzle Maker. And this one I, is another one that I've done with that, which is really just a, a, a number one. Um, and actually it's quite difficult, so I'm not expecting us to try and finish that. Um, but I just thought it would be interesting to show you that you can do ones that aren't necessarily all about words. Um, I use it for crosswords as well. I've done crosswords um, that I put up as icebreakers. So I think having a lot of things that you can use as icebreakers when you do do a lot of that will collaborate like, like type stuff is really good because Often there's a bit of a dip around at the beginning, for example, as there was today, because I, I have connection problems. And often my students would have, you know, somebody would have a bit of a problem getting in, and we'd be trying to wait for them a little bit to give them a few minutes grace. And I always tell people to come in early for sessions like that. Um, and, you know, then they're getting bored and they're on Facebook or they're starting to scribble all over the whiteboard and I'd rather than did so they did something a bit productive if possible. Okay. Okay, this wasn't one that we um, that came up as one that we were going to look at today, but I use Symbol Edu a lot. Um, again for students. And again if you want to check out the link. Um, I think it's great for, again, for literacy students because it can be very visual. And I use colour coding a lot for the different levels that my students are at. And that's one of my, that's one of my staying safe online ones. Um, and again, you see the multiple colours for the different types of resource. Yeah, and Danielle, the other thing I found is really, really great for use of Symbaloo is when you want them to do some research, but you don't want them to get lost in the internet. A sort of, I use it as sort of guided research. I'll give them a series of links. For example, with this one, the, the three links from the top are all, are all cyber safety sites. And that means that instead of my students, 15 students coming up with 
you know, 15 times 3, 45 different sites potentially, they were only focusing on those three. So when they did review stuff on them, it was much easier for me because I didn't have to visit all these sites. And also, there wasn't the risk of them visiting something that was totally inappropriate because in the early stages with my students, they often don't know how to evaluate the quality of the site. And yes, I, I can imagine it would be exactly the same with the younger students. I mean, mine are adult literacy, but often, you know, with the literacy issues, there are also those inability to evaluate a website type issues. Okay, I had it set up to do with advantages, and but you might want to see these. This is access to the blogs. Um, these are no longer being maintained, but they're still there. And the course blog actually has links to the students' blog, so if anybody wants to go and have a look, um, that's probably worth a visit. Thank you, Joe. And I know that we're running out of time, so these are some of the projects we used that formed the blogging um, thing. Any questions? Very, very quick, that was, but still. Any questions both that anybody's got? And I'm going to move on while you think about questions and say takeaways and feedback. And I'm no doubt the dislikes will be the horrible techie issues at the beginning than my dislike for a while. Um, so apologies that it's been a bit of a um, a roller coaster in a way. I just hope that something of interest has been in there for some people. And if anybody um, Shambles, if you want to put any comments, please feel free to put them in the in the chat and I'll copy them up to the main main site. I'll get to the main whiteboard. Yeah, um I will be sending sending this Joe, I'll give you the mic in a second. I will be sending this to shambles to put up with the sessions and I will put I will put the stuff that's on the whiteboard into the PowerPoint before I send it. Jo, go ahead. Now while we're just writing about our takeaways from the session, I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed, Jo. It was a wonderful session. It was such a pity that we had all the difficulties at the beginning. But what we did um, have once we got going was just brilliant. And um, yeah, somebody here says, always love the interaction in your sessions, Joe. And I think that's that's one of the main things that I love about your sessions too. Um, and I love the fact that you choose uh, tools that are going to be easy to learn and easy to share and um, easy for students to pick up. Um, and yes, somebody here has just written in the um, in the chat, um, I thought you modelled the pro you modelled the problems at the beginning was deliberate to show that we're human, and you modelled how to deal with the problems. Brilliant, and you stuck with it. And um, yes, um, thank you very much. Oh, that was Shambles who said that. So yes, thank you, thank you very much indeed, Joe. And I'd like everybody to put their hands together um, in the illuminate way and and give Joe a um, a, a big um, round of applause. You can do that by the drop down underneath the smiley face, um, putting the, the hands together like this. Um, and I'm going to hand back to Jo now. Um, I don't know whether Carmen and Shambles would like to have a talk or whether, uh, or whether they're just saying that yes, they too um, are clapping. Um, so I'm going to put my hand down now. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Come and come. And do you want the um, microphone? No, I'll I'll hand it back.
Okay, Carmen, just in case you don't know how to use the microphone, you click once to talk on that talk button, and then click again when you're finished. Can you hear me now? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Um, this was a, a fantastic experience for me. This was the first conference I have attended here, and it was very fruitful. It seems that um, I have discovered many online tools, which I have to um, obviously try and then try to use them in my work in e-content or something like that. Thanks very much for everybody and for the effort you all done for us. Thank you. Maybe um, I will see you on another conference. Thanks very much. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Um, anybody else want to grab the mic? Okay, so I'll, dro I'll, I'll drop mine now. Ah, oh, so your your mic not working. So, try, do you want to try again? Yeah, let's. Uh, that's better. I didn't have my hand up. I had to put the hand up first. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I always enjoy coming to your sessions with um, edge blogs and serendipity and things like that. They're always so very practical. You always have something for us to do. We don't just sit and listen. And uh, that's what I enjoy. Thanks for another great session. Well done. Thank you, Sue. I guess most of you probably know by now I'm a bit paranoid about just sitting there and doing nothing because I tend to go and play on Facebook as well, just like my students. <laughs> okay, I better hand back to the moderators. Sorry, Joe or Karen, do you want to wind up a bit, or is there anything else? Yes, there is something to do. We're supposed to go on to another another slide, aren't we? And I I haven't got the link for the next session, so I'm not sure who's up next. I'll drop the mic for you, Joe and Karen. Hi. Uh, yes, thank you very much for all that. It went really well, except for the problems with the the uh, internet, but I'll just stop the recording now and when you leave there'll be a survey to fill in. We thank you very much for all your attendance.